So just could you sketch what went around a woman's hips from Elizabethan time to 17th century to 18th century to 19th century? Because there was always something underneath that dress. There's right? always something, yes, yes. Well, um, of course, going back, way back, there, there was nothing. I mean, they just, you know, medieval dresses just hung straight. They were very slim, narrow. And um, it just gradually, um, the, um, the bodices got more structured. And, um, and why it started, I don't know, to put something around the waist. I, I don't know the reason for that, but it, it did. It just got larger and larger and larger. And then through the, um, say, as, as the Elizabethan time. Now, these are our court clothes. The ordinary people did not dress like that. You know, they, they, they just had very simple clothes. But so often for the stage, you need to do the, the And when did the, the under, the, the baskets or the hoops or whatever, when did they finally disappear in the sort of fashion line? Um, it wasn't until about 1900. Because they went through a, in the 18th century, they were, they were on the sides. And then um, in the 19th century, um, Actually, there was a period, early 19th century, when there wasn't anything at all in the Empire period, early 19th century, when there was, there was hardly any structure at all. And then it got into uh, small crinolines, the early Victorian era, 1830, 1840. And then the crinoline got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until 1860, they were enormous crinolines. I don't know why, it was just the evolution of the way it went. That's gone with the wind and scarlet. That's the gone with the wind, curve. yes, that's right. And then in the 1870s, the, the fullness all moved around to the back and became a bustle, that's which right. went through the 1890s. And then by 1900, it was pretty well all gone. Because the Edwardian clothes, although there's a little bit of a, of a bum pad at the back to hold the skirt out. Um, it's not very much. And then we got to the 1980s, and then and women put shoulder pads on. Yes, <laughs> it's just uh, it's what do you a make constant of that? change. I don't know. I don't women know. went from don't accentuating know. this yes, to suddenly to accentuating it. this. Yes, of course designer, designers are at fault. <laughs> it's the designers who do that. So to go back to the undergarment around the, the, the hips of a woman all for yes. four or five hundred years, yes. how do you actually make those paniers or those? Uh, well, today mostly we do it, um, and, and they did at the time, they did it with steel, flexible steel, and um, a, cotton, a cotton base. And that's, that's true, we do that today. Uh, as I say, the word panier, which is what those are called, the side ones for the 18th century, comes from the French word for baskets. And if you, you know the, the baskets that they put on a, a mule or horse where there's a basket on each side, it comes from, comes from that. But, um, not a great image. Not a great image. I put image, baskets though. on a mule or a woman. <laughs> but it's, and, and why, I mean, why something like start, I have no idea, no answer for that. But, um, and in the 18th century time, they actually did use a woven, like a wicker a construction for those panniers. But they also made them of cotton with flexible steel, as we do today. We do that. So when, you make, uh, when you're working on a period production here at Stratford, would you have tried to use the original materials to make the panniers or use well, modern materials? Well, they're not seen. So you can use whatever, I mean, they're undergarments, so you can use whatever um, you, you can find to, to make it work. It's as simple as that. And usually you just use a strong cotton for, for, um, for building those because it, it has to be something that will support steel, uh, a flexible steel. And there seems to be a degree of engineering as well as cutting. Yes, so yes. That's all, part of, that's, all part of, <laughs> that's all part of Cutter's craft. To know how the steel yes. will hold as up I say, the dress. Yes, it is engineering. I remember doing uh, 18th century dress for um, one of the ugly sisters in the opera La Cenerentola, which um, Leslie Hurry designed. And um, the, there were two ugly sisters, one small with a s very small pannier, and, and a much larger lady, Muriel Greenspawn, who was the, the um, singer. Um, who is a, a large person to start with. 
So Leslie wanted the, the pannier exaggerated. So it was really, really wide. Well, it got to the point where it wouldn't stay, wouldn't stay there. It collapsed on the sides because it was, it was beyond the point of the structure holding, holding up. And so I, <laughs> I solved the problem by actually sewing um, yardsticks in along, this is a steel, which is flexible steel, and will take quite a lot of, of strain, but it gets too wide, it won't stay there. It collapses in the side. So I, I solved the problem by drilling some holes and having the prop department drill some holes and some yardsticks, and I simply sewed them in, so they were, it was absolutely rigid. So this singer had, had yardsticks or meter sticks yeah, coming she had, out? She had yardsticks across here front and back, and then the, the steel would support the, the sides. But that was, that was a problem I had to solve. Bodices, yes. are they more difficult than, these are bodices becomes a corset, is that right? Yes, it, it can be both, I mean it can be a, an undergarment, or it can be, um, and usually women of those periods where, where, where corsets were worn, wore a corset, and then the bodice went over top. So you wore two, two layers. But the, the most structure comes from the corset, because that's where the silhouette is made by, by pushing the body into a, into a certain shape. And say you're working with a designer and an actress uh, putting a corset on, how do you know, I mean, me, I just remember from the movies, all the, the maids, you know, pulling, pulling the pulling lace the and laces, putting the knee yes. in the back of the woman and pulling yes. the lace in. How do you know how much you can actually constrict a singer or an actress uh, in, in a corset to give her the silhouette? Well, you, you have to, uh, they, they vary a lot. Uh, singers are usually some of the best. They like to have the support as long as it's not too tight. They like to be able to feel something against their diaphragm they can sing against. So I've, I've often found singers, and you often have to do 18th century bosses for Mozart, for instance, for, for singers, and they, they often appreciate that, but you mustn't get it too tight. Um, and that's something you just work out of the fitting. Right. You know, how, to, how tight to make, make something. And you but find actors and, uh, sorry, actresses are like more with the corset as opposed to um, well, They vary, they vary a lot. Some people like the feel of being quite, quite tight, but you always, you always have to have the diaphragm free so you can breathe even an, an actress as well as a singer. So drafting a pattern is in fact, how do you draft a pattern for a costume? Well, drafting is one technique that you use to, to achieve a pattern and it's you use the measurements that you have. Um, you mean actually drawing on a piece of paper? Yes, you draw, you draw, panel, right, up, you draw right on the brown, brown paper and um, you, you, you know, you have measurements like, like neck to waist. You have, um, if you have the right measurements, you've got shoulder to shoulder, and you have, you have a chest measurement or a bust measurement, you have a waist. Um, you, you have learned from your training what shape the armhole has to be, and um, there are even little, little, um, um, shapes that you can buy that, uh, that are an armhole shape, so you can just draw around those. Um, you, you do that, you do drafting all for measurements with your ruler and your square, and that's the most mathematical, it's the most geometric, but you can't achieve everything by drafting. This there, is on paper. This is on paper. And right then on you the table. sew the paper together? No, the paper is simply your pattern. You cut it out. Oh, you I cut see out right. the paper, and then you lay the paper pattern on your fabric. Um, there is another totally different way of achieving a pattern, and that is to drape. Uh, it's, and you do that on a dressmaker stand, with a, um, often with muslin inexpensive cotton muslin and that that is useful for periods that aren't terribly structured if you're doing 20s 30s um, 
modern. We would be talking women's costumes. Yes, we're talking women's costumes right. here. Yes, men's costumes are, are, are much more structured. And um, they vary a lot less than, than women's. And you can often, often draft uh, a man's pattern uh, at almost any period. Because they're very, they're very uh, geometric. I mean, a man's coat is a very geometric shape. And um, we say almost with, at all periods, they're very geometric. And um, then there is, there is something that, that I use, um, that I've always used a lot. It's called a flat pattern method. It's something I learned at, at, in my home ec course at university. You, you take a, a basic shape, a basic pattern, which is just you know, a neck, a shoulder, um, an armhole. Um, going down without any, any embellishments or anything. And you adapt that. You, you cut into it and make a dart, um, which you need in, in more modern periods. You need darts in your clothes to make them fit for a modern period. You cut that, you cut that piece of paper apart. You expand it. If you want to, to make it wider, you cut through and, and have a space between. And this is how, again, you're laying down something on a piece of brown paper. But that is, it's a different way of arriving at a shape, a specific shape, than using measurements. And as I say, the draping, um, again, is, is very specific to, to wanting a fluid, um, a much softer approach to. And certainly when you're doing modern clothes, you, you, need to, you need to drape, for women, you need to drape the, the patterns on so the So having stand. drafted a pattern on paper, put it on the fabric, cut, cut the fabric, out. and then as roughly assembled it? Yes. And then it goes to the first fitting with the actor yes. and the designer? Yes, yes. Uh, often base it together so you haven't gone too far. Um, Yes, the first fitting can be, um, you're, you're finding out just where your final s stitching is going to be. You know, when you need to take something in or let something out or move a seam. Um, and usually you cut fairly wide seam allowances, so if you have to move seams around, you, you, you can.